opinion, um, there's some some YouTubers out there and, and and the kind of informants around the Meldish case, Frank Fosco, et cetera, and some of the evidence that kind of came to light, a little bit suspect that it wasn't like a layup for those four gentlemen, meaning they're going for like a rule 33, they're trying to get overturned. And although yeah. don't get me wrong, they probably weren't choir boys, but they may not have been on this individual hit. Do you have any context to that or do you cover any of that in the book? Yeah, I do. It's it's really a complicated oh, I know. scenario because you have and 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 I'll just say I don't necessarily think that Stephen Crea or Matthew Madonna really <laughs> probably had much at all to do with this um, yeah. murder and and probably got roped in on the name recognition. Yeah. Um, but that that being said, it's so complicated. There's different witness accounts. There's, I mean, Frank Pasqua and, and his father yeah. who were also tied back to the Purple Gang. Um, yeah. You know, then you have. Uh, Terrence Caldwell and Lindo, is it Londonia or Londina? Yeah. yeah. Um, who are, you know, are, are charged and convicted of, of murdering Meldish and all the courtroom stuff going on. So it was really kind of this, this, uh, yeah, it's anything but a slam dunk case. It was really kind of this labyrinth of, of conflicting witness. And then there was the other witness, um, who just got in trouble again recently. It was who the FBI ended up like cutting loose. Cause everything he said, uh, he was the, uh, Christopher's um, cellmate. He, he was the one that had oh, the story about him. Trying... Yeah, that's it. Oh, there's another winner. Yeah, so. Another uh, but yeah, basically, I, you, there are the, there's still the two competing narratives of was it a Bonanno hit or was it a Lucchese hit? And one that's, of the what that's where it doesn't make sense where yes. you know, if Stagno gets hit, then, and, and, you know, mobs about protocol and that kind of stuff, especially murders were sparse. Wouldn't the bananas want to take care of it? There was a story allegedly that he kind of insulted uh, what's his name, um, um, a Madonna. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, but also you know, Panisi tells the story when when the bananas kind of usurped the club. They didn't even kill him for that, like that group. But yet they killed him for it. Just it doesn't it doesn't add up at all to me that that particular you know that particular event you know. Yeah, and there was another thing that he might have owed money, but I, I mean, rarely do you hear guys getting killed for owing money. Usually, they get Correct. a beat, beat down or something. Correct. So, yeah, there it, it was, and that's one of the things. Like maybe five years from now, I'll do a, an updated epilogue because that story yeah. is still not over. Like you said, they're, yes. they're coming out on appeal with that. Um, so, now, um, one question I have, and I always kind of wondered this: is the Michael Mel this should happen? Listen, you know, listed as a purple gang. This is 2013. This isn't that long ago. Yeah, exactly. um, for your research, what was he doing? You know, what did what you have going on? The the last like concrete stuff that I saw of him was uh, probably around the early 2000s of some involvement in illegal activity and and just stuff I heard from people like, oh yeah, he was around, he was doing this, he was doing that. Um, so obviously, I th I think with his involvement in in the ends of the Baker shooting that he was still associating with with the underworld. He was still yeah. involved in, in some aspect of, of that activity. And, and certainly from people in law enforcement that I spoke to, that was their belief as well. Was there remnants of the purple gang? No. So the purple gang really started kind of dissipating in the early eighties. Now, some of the guys still work together and did some other stuff, but you don't really see um, that the, that group working together like they did. And, and you see kind of offshoots going like Frank Vicerdo and Paul Cayano, they go to Florida. Um, some of the guys are up in Tuckahoe or, or North of the city. Yeah. Um, some of them are still involved with drugs though. You'll see, there's a few um, drug cases in the early eighties. Uh, and then again, in the early nineties where you'll see a couple of the guys names that are, that are working together. Um in fact, it was like 92 or 93, the Daily News ran an article about a big drug bust. And that was one of the only times in the 90s that I even saw the Purple Gang mentioned in the media. It was like, in fact, they talked about this is the shades of the old Purple Gang of the 70s. Now, um, before we wrap up, without giving too much away, mm -hmm. uh, what was one thing during the research in the book that just boom, smacked in the face? Or at least, or at least give us a teaser that we have to find in the book that when you did your research, and you're you're a pretty high pale comparison and knowledge compared to you. You have many books. You're a bestseller. 
But what was one or two things that, you know, again, give us a teaser or tell us a little bit that you just were shocked that when you found out in the book. Yeah, so I'll do three things. Uh, first was something that I found was the 1976 DEA report. So I wrote this book and did most of the research primarily during COVID. Yeah. So it really limited some of my stuff. And even like FOIA requests, I just got my FOIA request for Frank Vicerdo like two <laughs> weeks ago because everything was pushed back because of yeah. COVID. Was it redacted? It, so it was, the first time it was redacted because I forgot to attach the death list. And then I was like, oh, man, I can't wait another couple months. So I reached out to a guy who sent me the email and I said, look, man, here's my situation. Can you please help me out here? And I yeah. attached the death, death list. And he said, um, and for those listening, the death list is when you make a FOIA request. Um, generally, you want to give them a list of people that are dead that you think are going to be in those files, as well as like an obituary or something to prove. Yeah, something Randall, like, Randall. yeah. Like ancestry.com page showing that they're dead. So yeah. when they see their name, they won't redact it. Interesting. So he pushed it to the front of the queue, and there were still some things redacted, uh, but it, it was just opened up this whole trove of, of information.